Hi, I'm Elizabeth Postel from Boris Facts with another Mocha Pro Quick Tip. Today we'll delve into how pre-processing can save you in challenging tracking situations and explore the newly added High Pass filter. Pre-processing an image can help you get a better track whenever you came across a tough shot to track. Adjusting gamma and contrast can help you enhance specific details and make it easier for the tracker to stay locked on. Blurring or denoising the image can eliminate small distractions like rain or snow, leaving only the base texture to track. And in Mocha Pro 2024.5, we've added even more functionality. Not only is preprocessing now available on the camera solver tab, but we've also added a new, long-awaited feature, a high-pass filter. But what is so special about it? Here in Nuke, I've created a homemade high-pass filter to show the basic concept behind it. Imagine an image can be broken down into different components, or frequencies, like sound waves. Low frequencies represent smooth areas with gradual changes in brightness and color. We can represent that with this blurred image. If we remove those low frequencies from the original image, we will be left with only the high frequencies, which corresponds to the sharp edges and details. So what the high pass filter does, it allows high frequency detail to pass through while reducing the impact of low frequency information. In other words, it weakens the influence of color and luminosity in the image, leaving only the detail. This is what a high-pass filter does in a nutshell. If you came across a tough shot with a lack of details like this one, there is no need to create that whole setup just for tracking, since high-pass can now be found right in the pre-processing window. And you can get the same result right inside Mocha by tweaking just one parameter. Let's look at some of the pre-processing options. When working on a low contrast shot, turning up the gamma and contrast might not be enough, as it might enhance some elements we don't want to track, like these bright spots. High pass, on the other hand, can help to pull out edge details while eliminating shadows and light. This is really useful in shots with fast brightness changes. You might be surprised how much details and scratches can be hidden in a surface that does look completely smooth. These are much better to track. Keep in mind that if you're working with Adobe plugin, your project setting must be set to 16 or 32 bits. Otherwise, having it set to 8 won't pull out as many details. Now let's see how that could be applied when tracking this next shot. Here I needed to do a simple 2D planner check of the cutting board. It doesn't look like we have a lack of texture here, so it shouldn't be problematic, right? I drew my shape like this in order to avoid the occlusions caused by the fruits. However, if you look closer, you'll notice that we have a problem here. See how the surface moves when the orange comes into the frame? It would be easier to see if I turn on the grid. Although we are not overlapping with the fruit directly, the shadow from the hand interrupts our track and makes the surface jitter. It's a subtle move, but the fact that I can't see it makes my inner perfectionist unhappy. Well, one way to avoid this would be to first move my shape somewhere over here, track it until the apple appears, then move the shape back and make it even smaller to avoid the shadow second time. What I mean is that I would need to animate the shape throughout the whole clip to avoid both shadow and direct occlusions. A much faster solution would be to leave the shape as it is, but just apply a high-pass filter. Remember how we talked about that high-pass filter not only reveals hidden detail, but it also removes color and luminance from the image. That's exactly what we need here to avoid the shadow interference. I prefer to have the preview turned on while I'm tweaking the parameters. What I find works best is setting the high-pass value to somewhere between 2 and 3, and then cranking up the contrast to almost max just before the image turns into a noisy mess. Remember, the noise is also high frequency. Something like this looks good to me. Now we can disable the preview and try tracking again.
and voila, a rock solid track with no manual shape adjustments required. This could be a real-time saver for longer shots or the one that has more challenging lighting situation. Moving on to 3D tracking. This is the shot we're gonna try to get a camera for. I've already masked out the dancing dude on the back with a garbage mask to avoid him confusing the solver. The rest of the parameters are left on default and I click on Solve camera. Here we go, let's review what we have. It holds reasonably well up to a certain point, but eventually loses the track and starts to jitter. All those flashing lights make it a really tough shot. Another challenge for a high-pass filter. I would bring the pre-processing window up and again set the high-pass somewhere between 2 and 3, then turn up the contrast to around 80. Since light changes in this clip are way more dramatic than in the previous one, we cannot eliminate that flicker completely. But bringing up those edge details on the pillows and other areas should help the tracker to hold on better. Now that's done, I can clear the solve and start all over again. Boom! The HPix graph already shows a much smaller error. But let's play back the clip and see if we were able to get rid of that jitter. All of the feature points are holding well, and there are no noticeable jumps or jitter. High pass filter saved the day again. High pass can be a real life saver when tracking situations are far from perfect. Try it on your shots and let us know what you think in the comments. My name is Elizabeth Postel for Boris Facts. See you in the next one.